In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. This is Please a be seated. Of Wirecast. Good morning, Saints. Things have been changed a little bit since I was here last time. <laughs> it looks great. Now I'm gonna ask, for just because I feel like this is echoey. Is this mic echoing back? Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh. I've been here before, but I have two mics, so I wanna make sure maybe this one is unmuted. Oh, it's muted. We good? This All is right. a demonstration so of So for those of you who I don't know, because I think there are a lot of new people since I was here last time, I'm Bishop Jennifer, your bishop, your chief pastor. In the Episcopal Church, as you may know, the church has one congregation really spread across central and southern Indiana with various mission stations all around. And Good Samaritan, you are probably our fastest growing community. It is stunning to see, even since I was last here, how you are. This is a demonstration and of Wirecast. As we go in our journey together, this is my seventh year as your bishop. I'm in my seventh year of our episcopacy. And so um, we've been through some stuff. Because, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just kind of the way it is. Life is like that. And there has been a pandemic and change and new leadership. And I could not be more thrilled that you are doing so well under Father Jim and, um, and his wife Kim and all of the people who have been a part this of this resurgence. So thank you, Father Jim. Wirecast. Thank you for all of the lay leaders who helped make this place so incredibly vibrant. It is a beautiful thing. And as we journey on, I continue to look forward to all of the ways in which you will continue to bless our community in this diocese. Now, did you hear our lessons a few minutes ago? <laughs> so when I first heard, I read those lessons, I was like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> like this is how you know we've come, we're getting closer to Christmas, actually because we get this all of these lessons an about of wrath and indignation and weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so Av Christmas com is coming and Advent is coming and all of this sort of, the world is coming to an end, the last things are coming forth, Jesus is coming back. All of those things are a part of what the church is thinking about and praying about and, and sort of moving towards in this time of the year. But on a day like today, I cannot preach on that. <laughs> I honestly, it's not like, a, like I'm trying to sort of get out of a hard teaching, but when we are doing the things that we're doing this today, is a demonstration of Wirecast. preaching fire and brimstone, which is really not my style anyway, is not how we're gonna go. I do wanna, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> but I do wanna talk about giving and receiving. You know, Christmas is coming, and there's a lot of giving and receiving that happens. And I'm mindful, it may be, this is just how it seems to me, but we are often, I think, as a culture, more comfortable with giving than we are with receiving. Now, we're also in stewardship this season, so just hear me. I'm glad, I want us to be thinking about cast. giving. Giving is great, right? Like giving with all we have and giving generously and all of that is wonderful. But it seems that we might have an easier time giving than perhaps receiving. I don't know, maybe you've been that person who, when you're given a gift, you, you know, you're like, oh, you shouldn't have, right? Or you get something that someone gives you and, and you receive this gift and you're like, oh, this is just, you know, you kind of downplay it because receiving a gift sometimes is hard or complicated for this us. This is a demonstration and so of Wirecast. I want to talk about receiving today because we're doing a lot of that. Our tradition in scripture and in the Episcopal sort of tradition has a lot of receiving that happens. And it might happen in such a subtle way that we don't pay as much attention to it. But if you listen carefully, you're going to hear the word receive or receiving a lot today. We think about it perhaps when we contemplate what we do after we have had the service of the word and we prepare to this receive communion, we of receive Wirecast. the body of Christ in our hands and as we take the cup, we receive Christ into us, right? We know how to receive that gift. But today we're gonna to receive a lot of people who have chosen to make this part of the Anglican tradition, this part of the Catholic Christian tradition home the Episcopal Church. 
These are folks who have been a part of the faith communities in other places and have said this particular way of being this Christian in the Episcopal Church Wirecast. is what I want to claim. So we're going to receive those folks. There are some other folks who are going to reaffirm and kind of stand up in front of all of you and say they want to reaffirm their faith in ways that are public and deeply meaningful. When we baptize um, Blaze in Brisbane, we're going to, all of us say, we receive you into the household of God. So we're receiving a lot today. Now, Aristotle is, um, is known to have talked about uh, of receiving in a way that I love because it's actually pertinent to me. But you can't see it. I've got this ring, this bishop's ring. We were talking about this at the, the um, foodie dinner last night. Like, what's up with this ring? And the tradition in some places to kind of venerate the ring or kiss it. Like, we don't do that. I don't, that's not my piety. So don't worry about that. But, um, but this ring has the seal of the diocese on it because whenever I seal a document or a certificate a for ordination of or consecration of a bishop, I take off the ring and I press it into wax. And what Aristotle said is that being received, particularly the way we're going to do it today, is really akin to how when you press an object like a signet ring into wax, the wax changes and takes on the shape of the, the mold of the ring and imprints. And I just love that image. The wax kind of is hot and warm and it yields to the this thing is that is being pressed down into cast. it to receive it and it, then it's changed. So when we receive people into the household of God through baptism, when we receive people into the household of the, of the church by reception, they are being not just, we're not just receiving them, but we are being changed and transformed by their presence. The whole body kind of yields a bit as we kind of make more space to open up the gift that those who are being received into the church bring to us. And this we are not is the a same. Of wire and that's cast. a wonderful, beautiful thing. The church of God is always dynamic and changing, and you, Good Samaritan, are different almost already because of the ones who will be received today. God is doing such a powerful thing here. And in the world where there seems to be so much that is stuck or negative or all the hard things that are about life right now, we need to remember that there is this movement, this, this transforming body here that grounds us, that gives us a place to stand and to be sturdy, that helps us to know that we are not alone, that we have a community that is our new family. And if I, um, I, I've said this at the diocesan convention, I think, um, in other places, but I want to say it here because I think I need to say it more often. It is my understanding that if you are joining this body of faith, that you actually have this huge extended family. This is a always. demonstration of wire. This is your primary family, as well as your blood relatives. These are your blood relatives in another way. And wherever you are, you've got people. This is your family forever. You, have been, you will be marked, as we will do with Blaze in Brisbane, we'll mark them as Christ's own forever. And whenever we renew our baptismal ba vows, which we'll do in a moment, we reclaim that identity. It cannot be undone. This and what we do today, of as things in the world flow and sort of the tides rise and fall and things change, there are good times and bad times, this renewal act this reception, the ways in which we are changed, is also forever. And it is all to God's glory and goodness. Amen.